Hey guys, so I am an educator at Unacademy and you can follow me over there if you are interested to watch videos on basic concepts of chemistry or physical chemistry topics. You can also recommend this to your juniors and to your younger siblings, right? All you need to do is download the Unacademy learning app and watch my videos over there. Now let's just begin with our topic. So very good evening to all of you. Today we are going to talk about retro synthesis right now retro synthesis is like the basics of organic chemistry or the most app you can say the most application part of organic chemistry because retro synthesis is used in everything where organic chemistry you deal with organic chemistry you have to deal with retro synthesis right so the organic chemistry that you learn on a day to day basis it all comes down to retro synthesis if you can effectively do retro synthesis you can be a very good practical organic chemist and you can design a lot of novel molecules for yourself right so understanding this point is the fundamental thing that you need to do as an organic chemist right and if you are able to master this subject trust me you will love organic chemistry because this is the basis the fundamental of organic chemistry okay so we'll start with a basic introduction so uh, whenever you get a molecule okay you do the retro synthesis of the molecule let's say you identify a molecule if let's say you are working in medicinal chemistry you identify a target molecule okay you are you identify a target molecule and you want to design that molecule to design that molecule what you do is you do a retro synthesis of this target molecule okay you do the retro synthesis of this target molecule once the retro synthesis is done you have identified now when you do the retro synthesis you have to do it in such a way retro synthesis basically means dividing the molecule or you know dividing the molecule or, or subdividing the molecule into smaller fragments smaller fragments such that you come to a very very easy molecule which can be easily you know procured from the uh, commercial companies okay so you come to come down to a very very easy looking molecule which can be easily procured commercially and from there you start the synthesis so you have to break down a very complex molecule which is your target molecule into smaller molecules by known reactions okay preferably there should be named reactions or reactions which are very high yielding reactions okay so this is how you need to disconnect the molecule okay so this is what retro synthesis basically is taking a complex molecule and disconnecting that molecule by known um, by known reactions so that to come come with a product which can be easily uh, procured from the market and then from there you start the forward synthesis okay so retro synthesis is basically the backward synthesis of a molecule in other words it's also called as reverse engineering so sometimes there is a product that they already let's say the hackers the ones who work in computer software and everything they already know about the code of a software so they reverse engineer it to find out how did they design the code okay so it's something similar to that right now what are synthons so synthons are basically imaginary um, structures that you need to design your molecule okay and these synthons or intermediates not imaginary or you can also call them intermediates are basically the ones that you require okay we'll come on to the you'll you'll understand the definitions more clearly once we uh, look at the reactions okay so let's say over here if you look on your right let's say this is our target molecule okay so you can see this is our target molecule now the most favorable disconnection according to your organic chemistry what do you think can be okay so if you the more you practice the more things will get better for you like the more you'll understand so let's say this is the molecule earlier at first you will need a lot of guidance but once you do a lot of disconnections you'll understand yes from where do you have to disconnect so let's say if i disconnect this molecule from here the one where i have shown the arrow between the nitrogen and the carbon bond the carbonyl carbon and the nitrogen if i disconnect this bond generally if you see between nitrogen and carbon which is more electronegative nitrogen is more electronegative right so if i disconnect this bond this nitrogen carbon bond the negative charge will reside on the carbon on the nitrogen sorry so you can see the negative charge is there on the nitrogen and the positive charge is there on the carbon so these are the intermediates that are formed once we disconnect that bond and these intermediates are what is called synthon that when you do a logical disconnection whatever intermediates you get okay that those are known as synthons now now you, the important part is these synthons which they correspond to which reagent you need to identify to which reagent do these synthons correspond to so let's say this we can design with the help of this nh minus we can we, this reagent we can use okay this is the reagent we can use to make nh2 
um, to, ma uh, to make NH minus okay because if we add any base to this to if to this we add any base the b what will the base do it can abstract this NH right it can abstract this uh, hydrogen from the NH okay so this is what is possible okay the, this, this is one possibility and for this synthon this one over here what we can use we can use acetic um, anhydride okay we can use acetic anhydride or what we can do is we can also use this compound okay co and um, like we have this and we have a cl so this also can act this reagent that i have drawn can also act as a can also act as a reagent for this particular synthon because you can see if chlorine chlorine is electronegative so chlorine will have a delta negative charge and carbon will have a delta positive charge so it can act as this particular synthon that we require so either acetic anhydride or this compound can act as a synthon for this particular molecule now once i add the base or the base let's say will abstract the proton from uh, right it can abstract from the OH also but let's say I'm just taking a particular case that it abstracts from NH okay so once it abstracts that NH proton this NH minus will be generated and then this NH minus can come and attack this carbon over here and the chlorine will be kicked off and we'll get our final product over here okay but let's say this molecule is not available commercially let's say this particular molecule the para hydroxy aniline is not available commercially let's say so the next step we use is functional group interconversion now this no2 can be easily made okay as compared to nh2 if let's say we are starting from phenol this is our starting material no2 can be more easily made than nh2 okay so we do functional group inter interconversion that is from nh2 we go to no2 okay now from no2 we we can go simply to phenol now from phenol if you want to make para nitrophenol how can you do that you can do simple nitration okay HNO3 and H2SO4 if you simply add nitric acid and sulfuric acid you can simple, simply do the nitration and the nitration will happen either at the ortho position or the para position uh, I mean there will be a 50-50% yield for para and ortho positions so let's say you get at the para position then you all, all, all know that how to convert NO2 to NH2 right it's a pretty simple reduction reaction uh, once you do that from NO2 you can get NH2 so this now I'm talking about the forward synthesis so this is a sign for retrosynthesis for retrosynthesis this is a sign you can see over here also this is the sign for retrosynthesis that means you're going backward okay so retrosynthesis is basically the backward synthesis and for forward synthesis you simply simply use this arrow this is the sign for forward synthesis and this is the sign for retrosynthesis okay so we did nitration and from nitration we reduce it to NH2 and from NH2 what we did we added a base and we added acetic anhydride or acyl chloride and finally we got our target molecule so this is the way you approach a particular molecule so this is a very simple looking molecule but this is the procedure you use to make even more complex molecules okay now there, there, is, there are two things that you need to know um, one is consonant pattern and one is the dissonant pattern I think there must be some mistake with this slide um, this consonant pattern is overlapping the structures very sorry for that so let's say um, let's talk about a consonant pattern and dissonant, dissonant pattern what exactly is that so in consonant pattern what happens is let's say oxygen if you compare oxygen and carbon wherever you find a functional group you start giving them the charges okay so let's say on oxygen we have a negative charge because if you compare oxygen and carbon oxygen is more electronegative so we'll get a, we'll give a delta negative charge to the oxygen so now what you do is simply you will have to give a delta positive charge to the carbon because if one atom has a negative charge the other will have a positive charge then we move on to the next carbon if you so we have to give alternate negative and positive charges so if you are giving a negative charge to this oxygen this carbon occupies a delta positive charge so automatically the alternate position that is this particular carbon over here this will occupy delta negative and then the next carbon will have delta positive so the next carbon has delta positive then here we have oxygen so the oxygen will have delta negative charge so this pattern is called a consonant pattern that means it it follows the electronegativity electronegativity since oxygen is more electronegative it's having delta negative and so does the other oxygen it, it also has delta negative charge but let's say what is dissonant pattern dissonant pattern is basically i'll draw the structure again over here okay so let's say we have this molecule over here okay 
so now you give delta let's start with this oxygen we give delta negative charge to this oxygen okay so this carbon occupies delta positive now if you move on to the next carbon this will occupy delta negative and that means the oxygen will have delta positive so the polarity has reversed even though oxygen is more electronegative it is having delta positive charge okay so this kind of pattern is called your dissonant pattern okay so basically your 1 3 di ketones 1 3 di ketones follow consonant pattern and 1 2 di ketones follow dissonant pattern okay this is a 1 2 di ketone it's for it's following a dissonant pattern similarly if you see another ketone over here this is 1 2 3 4 this is 1 4 ketone so 1 4 ketone also follows a dissonant pattern because if you see let's give delta negative to this oxygen so this carbon has delta positive then we again we have delta negative on the next carbon the, then we have delta positive again and then in the next step we again have delta negative for this carbon over here again we'll have delta negative for this i'm going the opposite way okay so let's say we have delta negative for this carbon now this oxygen will have delta positive charge okay this oxygen will have delta positive charge so we can see there's a dissonant pattern because oxygen again has a delta positive charge but if we talk about 1,5 diketones uh, we get negative charge over here positive on this carbon then negative on this then positive on this then negative again and then positive on this carbon so the oxygen will have delta negative charge so this over here is called consonant pattern so 1,5 diketones 1,5 diketones show consonant pattern okay so this is the basic of um, your retosynthesis very interesting um, initially you might struggle with it but once you get the hang of retosynthesis it is very very interesting all right so i hope you found this video useful thank you so much for watching